We are so thrilled to have best-selling author Sarah Morgan in the Harlequin office with us today. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us I'm today. Good to be here. Can you tell us about the beautiful covers you have on display? Uh, yeah, this is my um, current book, One Summer in Paris, and we have both the UK and the US cover here. Um, I know some of you will have read it. I've had some lovely letters from you, so thank you for that. The UK cover um, is this one. It's an illustrative cover. This is the US. I think they're both absolutely gorgeous. Tell us in the comments which you prefer. Um, I don't have a favorite. I love them both. It's like children. You have to love them both equally. <laughs> And what about A Wedding in December? Yeah, A Wedding in December is my next book. We have the US cover um, here, absolutely beautiful. Uh, we don't have a UK cover yet, so that will be re revealed later in the summer, probably around August. Very exciting. Yeah. And can you tell our readers a little bit about One Summer in Paris? Yeah, so One Summer in Paris, um, it's uh, Grace's 25th wedding anniversary, and she has arranged this amazing trip uh, to Paris. And it's a surprise for her husband, but he has a surprise of his own, which is that he wants a divorce. So um, obviously shattering for Grace, but in the end she takes the trip on her own and she meets Audrey, um, an 18 year old who is also escaping from a really difficult past. So it's a, it's a book, um, there is romance, but it's really a book about uh, friendship and intergenerational friendship. And they each learn something from the other. Um, it was a really fun book to write, and I've had lots and lots of letters actually from, I think I've had, probably had more letters from readers about this book than any other, saying um, how much they've enjoyed it. So that's been really great. Um, yeah, so that's One Summer in Paris. So it's a sort of um, friendship, friendship book really, with lots of romance thrown in. And what inspired you to choose Paris as your setting for the story? Oh, well, I needed somewhere really romantic because she was going to take him there for their 25th wedding anniversary, mm -hmm. so it needed to be somewhere really special. Um, and Paris fits the bill because it's a beautiful city, so romantic. Mm -hmm. um, easy to get to for me because I live in London, as you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we can trip. hop on the train. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it just had everything I needed, really. And Paris is sort of another, another character in the story, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Beautiful, the city of lights. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what do you hope that readers will learn from both Grace and Audrey? Oh, well, you know, when I write, really, I just want readers to enjoy my stories. I just want them to, you know, have a, have a good time with them, really. And what, so I'm not big on messages, um, but I have had a lot of letters um, from readers saying that they found the friendship quite inspirational and how each character challenged the other um, to perhaps do something that they wouldn't normally have done and, you know, push them out of the comfort zone a bit, really. Beautiful. And we love the unique friendship that Grace and Audrey share. What inspires you to write about strong women and their friendships? Well, I think friendship is just so important. It's such an important part of life. And uh, even when I wrote um, Straight Romance, I still had a lot of friendship in the background because I think it's important. Um, and of course, friendship gives you endless, I write about relationships. I'm interested in relationships. And uh, friendship gives you endless scope um, for uh, fodder as a, as a writer because um, obviously you have positive friendships, friendships that challenge, but you can also have toxic friendships. Mm. So it's just uh, really interesting to me. And I think an intergenerational friendship is, mm. is interesting because as I say, they've both learned something from the other, uh, mm. looked at life in a slightly different way, if you like. Beautiful. Can you tell us about your upcoming book, A Wedding in December? Oh, We're so we excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a family drama um, about a wedding, but not a normal wedding that goes smoothly. Basically, the family are all gathering together in beautiful snowy Aspen for the wedding of Rosie, the youngest daughter. Um, and this is a whirlwind wedding, so it only is announced just literally weeks before Christmas. And the parents fly out, and what they haven't told their daughter is that they're actually getting a divorce. And this is not the time to tell the daughter because this is her happy day, so how can they spoil it? So they decide they're going to fake being together for the duration of the wedding and deal with it later. So they're, so the parents, uh, the mother of the bride and the father of the bride, are um, pretending that they're madly in love and... and <laughs> really they're on the verge of a divorce and the daughters don't know then the sister the older sister is really worried that her sister has made this decision so precipitously um, she thinks she's very impulsive and this probably big mistake so she's flown out to the wedding um, ostensibly to be maid of honor but in fact she's decided that she's gonna break it up so and then the bride herself is starting to get second thoughts so it's um, it's a you know it's a fun book I, I had a lot of fun writing it there's a lot of humor in this book there's lots of romance and I hope readers are gonna really love it it's very festive snowy um lots of drama yeah lots of drama <laughs> <laughs> and how did this storyline come to you what inspired you to write it 
The wedding in December. Well, do you know, that's really interesting. I don't know really, except that this, often I do know where an idea comes from. It's something you see or you might hear something. But with this one, I don't know. I just suddenly thought, wouldn't it be fun to do, um, to write about a wedding? Because you've got this hot house of family all together. Um, and obviously I didn't want to do a straightforward, smooth wedding. So it was just, <laughs> it was just a fun, a fun idea for having a nice Christmas family drama. We saw. We see a lot of comments here saying people are so excited to read this. Oh, one. I'm really it's excited great. to read it because I think, um, you know, from what my readers tell me about what they like about my books, I think this has probably got it. In that it mm. is fun. It is a fun book. There's a lot of comedy in it, but there is also a lot of romance. So any readers out there who are missing my romance, I think they will get that in this. But there's also some, you know, quite deep stuff because obviously yeah. the parents are, you know, in the process of um, separating and they haven't told anyone, so they've got this big secret. Mm. But uh, I love the fact that they're faking it and I had a lot of fun with that. A lot of fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the writing process for this one like? Do you know, it's funny because as an author, um, every book is different and you don't know going into it how, how it's going to write. And this one was probably one of the easiest books I've ever written and I don't think that necessarily means yeah it doesn't mean one book's any better than another um books that are, all authors will tell you that books that are really hard often end up being their most popular books so it, it doesn't I don't think it makes any difference on the reader experience but obviously from a writer's point of view it's really nice if a book's easy to write and this one really flowed really quickly yeah it's really easy to write so we love the characters in the white family they are fascinating all of them was there one that you identified with most or one that you found the most challenging to write? Well, all my characters are made up. You know, people often say, do you base it on somebody you know? And you don't because you really want an original character that you can work with. And if you base it on someone you know, then, then you can't do that. So they are all, all original. I suppose Rosie, the younger daughter who is getting married, the impulsive one, there is definitely an element of that. I'm quite impulsive. I change my mind about things. I'm very spontaneous and enthusiastic and then, and then I change my mind a week later. So th there are d definitely elements of me in Rosie. Um, her older sister uh, is more serious. She's a doctor. Um, yeah, she was probably more challenging to write. She's got some stuff in her background, which I don't want to talk about because that spoils Spoiler. the book. Yeah, <laughs> but um, she was a little bit more, more difficult to write. But uh, no, it was just a fun book. And... I see a lot of comments here. People are dying to know, what are you working on next? Oh, are well, you allowed to say? On, <laughs> I'm working on next summer's book. Um, and it, we don't have a title yet. And actually, I haven't done enough of it to start talking about it. Because I always think it's going to jinx it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, I'm having a lot of fun. And it's going to be set in partly in Manhattan and partly in the English Lake District, which I know mm. a lot of my readers will really like because I've set books there before. Um, a lot of my medical romances are set in the Lake District, and so this is the first time that I will have returned there with one of my longer books, and it's going to be really lovely, the setting, and yeah, it's going to be uh, a really, a really good, fun, emotional, romantic story. Can't wait. <laughs> so lastly, what do you hope that readers take away from A Wedding in December? Well, as I said, I'm not really big on messages. I just want them to enjoy it. You know, I just want somebody to pick up my book and feel that they've had a really nice couple of hours. I think that's what I want. And I think readers bring different things, take different things from books according to their different circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, some people um, find something really personal in a book and it really speaks to them. Um, like I remember having a letter from somebody after I wrote Moonlight Over Manhattan where um, Harriet, my heroine, um, tries to challenge herself to do one thing she finds hard every single day and I had a letter from a reader saying that she'd done that and that she left you know the house for the first time in a long wow. time and that so I think you know that books affect people in different ways it's why we don't always like the same books of course mm -hmm. we don't you know so we all take different things from different stories but I just hope readers have a enjoy it have a good time wonderful so we have a lot of viewer questions okay, that came yes, in question. do you have a writing lucky charm <gasps> Well, no, my laptop. <laughs> I don't actually. No, I don't. I, but, but perhaps I need one. Perhaps then every book would be as easy to write as a wedding in December. <laughs> what originally got you into writing? Do you know, I, I don't know. I just always wanted to write. Yeah. I think if you're a writer, it's inside you that you feel the need to write. Mm -hmm. um, you know, writers usually write. And I would write even if I wasn't published. You know, obviously mm -hmm. I've been very lucky and I am published. And that's brilliant. But I would write even if I wasn't um, published because I really enjoy writing, yes. telling stories. And in the same vein, what are you enjoying reading right now? Oh, what am I enjoying reading? Oh, well, I read a lot. Mm -hmm. um, 
so and I read a mixture of fiction and non-fiction as well so at the moment actually I've been working my way through a lot of Reese Witherspoon's picks so yes. I read the Jasmine <laughs> Guillory the proposal which was great and I read um, Tyree Jones the um, American Marriage that was really great as well and I'm about to move on to the cactus. I do, yes. um, I, I really like her recommendations and it does sort of um, broaden your reading, which is really nice. But I read a lot of um, non-fiction as well. So I'm currently reading The Hidden Life of Trees, which is amazing. And one of the characters in um, a wedding uh, in December is a forester. So mm -hmm. you know, I got quite interested in trees. Um, and I read Bad Blood as well, the, uh, which is uh, okay, yeah, John Carrier, yeah. about uh, Theranos, the digital starter. The, nice. Sorry, that's not digital. Uh, mm. What well, anyway? Therapeutic mm. device startup, and that was really interesting. We yeah, have so a I lot on the go. Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> yeah, and, and, but it's a mixture of fiction and non-fiction, so mm. you know that uh, that makes a difference. Awesome. During your humorous scenes, do they ever make you actually laugh out loud? Oh yeah, absolutely. When you write them? They make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. nobody else may be laughing, but yeah, absolutely, <laughs> they make me laugh. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and the big question I'm seeing a lot of, can you pre-order a wedding in December absolutely. yet? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Just go to my website or what, what I'll do is um, after the Facebook Live, we'll post some links so to make Perfect. it easy. But if you just go to my website and go to the coming soon bits mm -hmm. with books, you'll see a wedding in December. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sarah. We see a lot of readers really excited to read these books. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for, for tuning in. Bye. Bye.